All right. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, March 31st, 2024. I'm Larry Rhodes, or DJ Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's me, the Wombat. And very cool. Our guest today is Dread Pirate. Welcome. Arr. The Dread Pirate. DJ Red Pirate, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faith, Ostafarianism, gods, holy books, and superstition. If you get the thing, if you get the feeling that you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. I guarantee it. Here in Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over 1,100 of us. We're the Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about us after the mid-show break, so be sure to stick around. Wombat, well, what's our topic today? Common sense. And I can't believe they'd say that on Easter. So <laughs> then we're going to have a, a nice couple of chats today and also catch up on some listener comments for the people who haven't been here on the last two weeks. Ooh. But before we jump into the main courses, how about we open ourselves up to an entree of some noodles led by our own Dread Pirate Higgs with our weekly invocation. Dread. Our noodly lord who art in a colander, El Dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread and forgive us our cussing as we forgive those who cuss against us. Mm. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the meatballs and the noodles and the grog whenever and ever. Oh, man. Man. Though I would say, um, you know, our great noodly lord opens doors and closes windows <laughs> at the same time. Because <laughs> I've had a situation where um, I have recognized even in my most unfortunate moments, brilliant moments of opportunity. And so here's a quick example. Um, I recently purchased a car. Um, I did it through buying it online and having the, the dealership deliver it directly to my home. And it was a very stress-free process because it was simply, that's the number that I want to buy it at. Are you selling it at this number? They said yes. And they got a guy on a car and they dropped it off my door. And I'm like, wow, that was ridiculously easier than going to a dealership and negotiating trade-ins and and financing all the stuff just a straight by turning my old car you got a competitive a price as well i sure did i'm like way below msrp it was like the only dealership that was doing it, it basically oh, cool. showed like all the prices for all the dealerships mm -hmm. across america and i'm just like well i'm just going to sort by price and pick the exact model i want and have the cheapest one and they're like yeah we'll give you that one i'm like that's all i wanted but the mm -hmm. the trade back was I had to wait for my title to come in. So that was going to oh, yeah. come in separately. And so even though I had the car, I didn't like feel like I legally owned it until it came in the mail. And so I had this conversation with someone who was like, oh, how do you like the new car? And I told him, yeah, I really, really do love it, but I'm still waiting for the title to come in. And I'm just a little nervous about that right now. And it did come in. But I realized when I said that, their impression of the, what I said was, oh, so you bought the car. Oh, so that's way better than financing it. And I realized that I took my hat to how I purchased the car without actually explaining in detail beyond that. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, couldn't that be, I gave up more information than I was willing to in like a casual conversation, but I thought, couldn't that also be a good way to express more personal things without having to like talk about it in, in a more casual setting. Cause I don't want to sound like I was showing off or anything like that, but I do want to be able to be honest. And so I thought, couldn't I apply that to atheism as well? And so I tried it out today or uh, this weekend and someone was like, Hey, it's Easter. And like, I knew it was Easter weekend, but I thought Easter was on Friday. And so I was like, Oh yeah. Happy Easter. It's like, no, today's good Friday. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well then happy Easter tomorrow. It's like, no, that's just Saturday. Or I'm like, okay, well then happy Easter the day after that. It's like, yes, that's Easter. <laughs> and he walked away, but then he, and then he was like, Oh, so you're not religious. And I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> uh, yeah. you got it in that's, one. That's pretty good. Jack. That's pretty good. Yeah. Right, right, right. That's a way easier way of dealing with it. And I can still be as pleasant 
than having to like load a conversation from the start being like, ah, I'm an atheist. I'm like, no one needs, I, I, and I can, I can let people know the exact same thing implicitly as well. So some levels I'm learning, uh, that was my, I had a, basically a really good weekend so far, took Thursday off That's and just fun. basically just, um, having a good time, just re decompressing from a lot of work. Uh, we are working on at our job, the development of cars that can run on water. It sounds mm -hmm. crazy right now, but it's the next level of engineering, and our lab's going to be the forefront for testing in that capacity. Oh, but I really can't get more cool. detail than that. Yeah. yeah. But we're, yeah. well, it's so cool the stuff we can come up with. Yeah. Also, uh, I heard something recently that they're yeah. learning, they're developing technology to get electricity out of moisture in the air. Well, okay. It's yeah. doable. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. doable. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Larry. So I it, you know, things like that are coming. I mean, we're looking at free. The thing about it is, if even if you get free energy, like if you were able to just capture energy from the air, you still got to have the infrastructure, which costs a lot of money. Correct. To be yeah, able correct. to deliver the energy to you. Right. So and I'm don't expect the price of energy to go to zero because yeah. they still got to support the infrastructure. Correct. And yeah. we're not looking for free yeah. energy because there is really no such thing as free energy. What we're looking for is energy that can be used up without emissions, zero cost emissions. Right. That would be right? the, the next great step. And the great thing about using water as a power source is there's enough energy in that, in the form of hydrogen, that you can basically have an emission that is oxygen and water. And when you think about that, okay, so my car dries and its waste products are more oxygen and water. I can mm -hmm. basically have my face right up against the muffler and be like, oh, this air in the atmosphere is so dirty. Let me get up in front of the back of my car and turn it on. Just <laughs> breathe yeah, slowly. Clean air. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Finally, some it's clean air. Like I want to live next to the highway. <laughs> yeah. It's going to change the power of paradigm. And the infrastructure is still being built on electric cars. So we still need electric cars. We just need to make them a bit more efficient, which we've done with yeah. like ice engines. But I feel like we've reached the point where we can get as efficient as possible. Let's let's try this new platform. There's a lot of opportunity there. Uh, Larry, how you been? Oh, doing fine. Still waiting to get my motorcycle out, though. It's not quite where I want it to be uh, temperature wise, but it's getting there. Nice. And and what's really getting me is that uh, dogwoods are starting to bloom. You're in March. It's in March, and dogwoods are starting to bloom, which sure. is crazy. Sure, sure, sure. That, we have that's early. I take it. More Say time. what? It's early. Oh yeah, it's early. Oh, okay. It's usually around the first or second. Usually the second week in April. Yes, but it's okay. they're creeping on up. Right. Not only that, but there's pollen everywhere. I do. Yeah. I think I lucked out without thinking about it. I do have a yellow car, so like now. <laughs> It's just basically only on the windows. And I think to myself, oh, I don't even have to wash it that much. <laughs> Turn on the windshield wiper. You're good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the the other thing that I love about this time of year is carpenter bees. I'm not sure if you are familiar mm -hmm. with them, but they are a bee that comes out. They they come out of their, their nesting around this time of year to mate and get some new nectar. But they are a super chill kind of bee because honeybees, I feel like, are only focused on working. And, and getting their stuff done and they have stingers. So like, don't interrupt me. Whereas carpenter bees are like, oh man, this is awesome. This is brand new to me. Everything's cool. Let me hang out here. Mm -hmm. I don't even got a stinger, man. Like I'm cool. Yeah. Like, can I just land and on your big. finger? They're big. They look they're like huge. bumblebees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, they don't come at you in ways or anything like that. They're just one mm -hmm. at a time. They're super mm -hmm. chill. If you see one, just be cool with them and they'll be cool back to you. Dread, how Unless you it's a bumblebee. And you can Unless recognize them by the... You can recognize them by the uh, the little saws they carry, right? <laughs> yeah. So some people little don't saw like and them. hammer. But little if saw you, and hammer. Yeah. If you don't like bumblebees and you're worried about your home, there's a good trick that you can do without <clears throat> having to use pesticides or anything like that. You basically buy a plank of wood at Lowe's and you just put some either holes or black circles on that plank of wood and you leave it out. And the bees will go to that rather than like try to dig new wall, uh, holes in your in your in your home. It's cool. it's the simplest approach that's nature friendly and yeah. Make sure it's not weather treated wood though. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, they're a kind of solitary bee, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Dread, how you been? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Um, you know, plugging away at this paramedic training thing. So, uh, um, this is the weekend I'm not in school because uh, so I'm in school every second weekend. So um yeah that's coming along and uh 
you know, living the uh, the life up in the Great White North. You are living the life. Um, but after after this next weekend, I'm I'm actually heading home for uh, that two week period in between uh, to do some of my bug stuff and uh, get my taxes done and all that good stuff. I'm looking forward to a big uh, a big refund this year. So oh, good. I had to pay. Oh, and and, uh, <laughs> and they decided to fix my car. Uh, like uh, I, I think I told you, I'd been sideswiped by uh, by somebody. No. I drive a an Audi A4 okay. uh, Cabriolet, so it's a you know it's a soft top, right? Yeah. But um, and I was worried that the damage was, you know, pretty extensive, and I was worried that they weren't going to, uh, you know, spend the insurance wasn't going to uh, pay to fix it. Yeah. But um, but it comes back, and sure enough, they're going to fix it. So I have my little blueberry back. Oh, good. Well, good. Yeah. Good. I'm glad you're safe. Yeah, I'm glad you're What's okay. That? I'm glad you're safe. Oh, he just yeah, I was I mean, I was going I was just leaving town and um this guy just, you know, he just entered the the uh, intersection, you know, and just tapped me. But just tapped me enough that, you know, like it didn't even push me into the other lane. Um it just tapped me but just got the whole the whole side whole side like from wow. the front, front corner panel right to the back and and mostly the door yeah it was just uh yeah oh yeah glad so you're okay cap. yeah yeah i'm glad you're okay i and, and listen that was god's plan god's <laughs> <laughs> plan god yeah 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 god's plan is always i'm going to get you in a car accident because that's part of the script <laughs> but it's the engineer script it's the scientist script. It's the policymakers and the the civil engineers and the the emergency responders team plan to basically not do what God had planned, right? There you go. Crumple yeah. zones, uh, good roads, exactly. uh, airbags, airbags, uh, emergency responders, like insurance yeah. systems. Everything's designed to be like whatever God's planning. We will do. We will do the opposite of it because we're we going to take care it. of ourselves. Yes. yes. And we actually made a better system at the end of the day, which is why I feel like we can talk to this today. So you have a <laughs> way more supportive architecture of support than prayer uh, to uh, to some particular gods. I would say you. Yeah, for sure. and, and you can and you can bet that the uh, whoever was on that uh, that container ship, hmm. whatever prayers they were making, didn't help. Right. 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 Uh, I want to talk about common sense but not in the in not in the standard way um because i feel like we all have a basic understanding of what common sense is what i mean more is common sense can erode can be eroded common sense can fluctuate downwards common sense can be uh de-evolved or l lessened through impacts of ignorance, just communal ignorance can have an effect on common sense. Sure. And so here's an example I want to throw out. Columbus might be known in America as the guy who not only discovered America, but also the guy who figured out that the earth was round. And one of the guys who went across the oceans for the first time. There's a lot of things we attribute to Christopher Columbus that factually is not true one because there are already people here when he came here so like people already discovered america's mm -hmm. two there are many people who uh went across oceans before him he's not the first one yeah. and then three the idea that the earth was round was well known in yeah. many societies all around the world larry you have one? They, they were already selling globes at that time <laughs> he's selling globes on t-shirts <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. aristophanes had uh proven it you know, 2,500 and, years ago. Yeah, right. Exactly. Aristosthenes did too. Like the that's, Egyptians that's are said. building pyramids because they know exactly like we we know where the sun's going to rise because we have a good understanding of like how like all the like you think we just built these randomly in the middle of the desert somewhere? It's like no, we did this because we under have an understanding of the curvatures of mm -hmm. Earth. And yeah. no, we're going to give it to Columbus. the 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 idea though is, if you were to do a poll right now on the streets of America. Like who, if who discovered one, where America was, that the earth was round, 
and uh the other thing i said at the top which i think was like earth is round discovered america crossed the oceans who did that mm -hmm. everyone's gonna say christopher columbus because that's the commonsensical answer that's what's now known as the common sense answer even though it's in not the west accurate. yeah even though it's not accurate uh, yeah in the west scary, yeah. in the west in the west in the west mm -hmm. but that is telling because common sense can be curved based on your geopolitical location and so if you, in the same way that you would ask someone which God exists or who's the God that does exist, so to mm -hmm. keep yourself from going into a different argument, it, that's based on geopolitical location. So is common sense. How, it's, how you are educated determines what your common sense is. What lies stay inside your current vernacular, stay inside your common sense. And as yeah. a result, your common sense, while, while we put it on a pedestal, is actually in two parts quite toxic if you don't have it well informed enough to get rid of it and move to a better standard of understanding or really care about how you're maintaining certain sort of mythologies in your current culture so that way you can say hey these are fictional stories this is what actually happened right like we need to take some ego out of here and appreciate facts more than common sense and so what i worry about right now is that is common sense actually a harmful thing just due to the fact that it's so subjective in the way it's taught and understood a lot of people have a sense of common sense but their common sense is actually just the product of all the biases from their their political environment or uh just their geopolitical location mm -hmm. larry do you think that's a fair statement what do you, what would you like to add well i think it's I don't know, kind of one-sided. It, it's multidimensional. I mean, common sense helps you out in some situations, and it, it's actually your detriment in others. Yeah. Um, I think that we have to rely on it uh, day to day, uh, you know. But common sense is built around the experiences that you've had. Uh, when you say common sense, are you talking about common man? Are you talking about something that everybody shares? Are you talking about um, just your intuitions, uh, your personal intuitions going forward? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say for common sense, it would be the common population, general, general so population. Yeah. common across people. Yes, yes. Not like your yeah. instincts or like your own intuition. Like generally, what would be understood across all people in Tennessee? So like basically that. societal. Yes. Um, and and senses between societies are, uh, change. Yes. So I, I, I don't know. I, I wouldn't, I don't think you could paint it as good or bad, period. I think it's. It's great. Okay. Okay. Dread, what do you think? Yeah, that's that's interesting. I uh I mean I think uh, you know, a level of someone's what what you would call common sense is you know, also dependent on their sort of uh their how reliable their uh, epistemology is, you know. Right, right, mm -hmm. right, right. Um if if you're not very aware of how the world actually works and you you're living in some kind of a delusion then your sense of common sense is not as robust or discerning um i would think mm. you're more prone to um you know <laughs> bad outcomes maybe i guess if you rely on common sense that's not built on a reliable epistemology right right larry i saw you and uh, and certain uh jobs certain employment uh are not very commonsensical like physics right you know, uh, yeah uh, they can be very counterintuitive in fact, uh -huh. right right you have to, to be able to get to the truth in physics you you need an, an awful lot of mathematical background to be able to under even if you just want to understand it rather than discover it yeah, but, uh, yeah. But the common sense for a common man i think it 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 serves them fairly well day to day mm, right you know, you know I've, you, you guys both bring up something really good because there are day-to-day -day terms that we take for granted that feel commonsensical but are actually detrimental to communication. And Dread, exactly as you said, it's a lot of down to your epistemology. I would, and, and in that scope is also your training and what, what context that you're speaking in, what's the background, right? And so right. I have people in my lab who come to me uh, who from a non-scientific background, they've had some uh, uh, academic, but then they get hired into our, on our site and we were a filtration company. So we'll work a lot with particles 
and I'll have them do an ex uh, an experiment where they get a bunch of particles isolated, and I want them to tell me how big the particles are, and they say, well, they're really big. And I have to remind them, like, on a, they put that down like a report or a PowerPoint presentation, like, these are really big. And I'm like, you can't, there's no such thing as big <laughs> or small right. in science. In science, right. it's how big or bigger than or smaller than, but right. there's just yeah. no standard for big and small. And they maybe yeah, macro like, and, or yeah, micro. You have to establish <laughs> yes. a scale and measurement yes. and all the rest mm -hmm. of it, right? Right, right. You're always referencing. Uh, an an adjective off of a standardized criteria. Right. You can't just say exactly. something's big. And so this is this has been a challenge for this person because their entire commonsensical life, they're just like, well, these are small things and these are big things. This is <laughs> 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 I don't know what you mean. Uh, right. I we did another experiment. So like I tried to show him the scale and we talked about macro and micro. And now he understands I'm never just going to say big or small. I'm going to say it's bigger than a blank or smaller than a blank or within this range. And then here's these numbers in the units. And that's the way how I always express size. But we did another experiment yeah. where one of his jobs was looking through our laboratory and trying to uh, improve one of our instruments. And he found that one of our instruments had like an old spring on it. So we bought a new spring. And I said, before you put the new spring on, you have to do a test to make sure that there's no difference between modifying this piece of equipment because it's still right. in use. And we wanna make sure it doesn't bias itself with the having a new spring even though it, it should have had a new spring to begin with or a well-working one. I want you to do a, a reference on both of them and see if sure. there's any differences. So he does the test and he says, doesn't look like there's any difference. And he has like these two stacks of numbers and like they look more or less the same. And I told him again, in science, there's no such thing as it looks the same. Like you have to do a standard test on it. Yeah. And he's like, more, well, more or less doesn't count. Right, right. More or less the same. Eyeball it the same. It looks more or less the same. These numbers don't look too different. Like none of those terms exist in a scientific context. We actually That's have right. to do statistical tests. Quantify it. Yeah. Rovers, rovers have crashed into Mars because more or less, right? Right. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But even though we are looking at these numbers and in our heart of hearts and our brain of brains in the most commonsensical way, I'm looking at two averages and they're only off by like a thousandth of a decimal, right? We're looking at this and like commonsensically, these look the same, but that's not good enough for standard or for science. Science has it to a higher standard than common sense. Yeah. And for the scientific standard, what we're going to do is something called a Q test, where we're going to look at all the averages. We're going to take the standard deviations. And we're going to do some math to verify that for the number of tests that we looked at, the number of iterations that we looked at, that the, mm -hmm. the variance is within a certain range and we'll give you a confidence. Yeah. What's up, Larry? Yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you have another way of measuring it? I mean, you need something that's a standard if you're going to test a piece of equipment and say this is piece is right or wrong before or after the spring was added. Did you have something that you could compare it to? Very good a question. Standard. Yes. So we had our raw samples that we were measuring, and then we had standardized samples. And then we also had legacy samples that we had when we did only with the old spring. And our anticipation, so it's three tiers of tests. One, the first tier test where we're just doing the, the standard work, we should expect with standard work that we get the same numbers, uh, statistically the same numbers with no variance between the two. And then when we do our benchmarking, we should have data that's within the benchmark qualification. It should be within the range right. that we'd expect for benchmark. And then for our legacy data with the new spring, we should get the exact same data as our legacy data. And in each case, we tested it. It looked the same. But we still did the uh, qualification Q tests and T tests, which are statistic tools to see if there's a big difference between uh, two sets of data and found out that everything was the same. It was a lot of work. It took us, you know, for him to to get his head wrapped around it, it took like a good two weeks of his standard work plus this project, what he was working on to like learn how to express that it's not just that they look the same, it's that we did these statistical analysis on them to verify that they are in fact the same. But I can tell you, it helped out so much better when he finally gave his final report, because one of the first things people were asking who are other scientists in the room was, how do you know those are the same? How do you know these two points of data are the same? Did you do any qualification tests to verify that? And he said, yes, it's not just me giving you off the shoulder. Yeah, they look the same. It's me going through a battery of statistical analysis where I verify that these numbers are within the range of acceptance for us to say that there's no major difference between the two up to a certain confidence level it's a longer answer it's more nuanced for sure but it's more uh strict 
and clear with all the verbiage used. And you can do the exact same test I did and come out to the exact same answer. That's the value that I love about science. It's like, it's not just, yeah. don't take my word for it. Do it yourself. You'll get the same answer I did. Well, how would you bring that type of example into the world of religion or, or testing religion or religious claims? <laughs> I'm actually willing to say that you can't because it's, yeah. it's explicit in the book that you can't test me. Please don't do tests right. on me. You know, yeah. like mm -hmm. Jesus is there probably walking around right now, 2000, 2024 years ago, wherever he was walking around with holes in his hands being like, don't look at these holes. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> don't yeah. be don't, a daddy. Don't look. Don't hey, look behind the curtain. You don't yeah, want yeah, to. Yeah, 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 yeah. So like, hey, if Jesus, you read let the me Bible, see your holes. Yeah. It's like, no, these are my <laughs> holes. <laughs> if you read the Bible, uh, Jesus did say, you know, uh, blessed are those who believe without evidence, basically. I know. But even Dieter Thomas, who wanted to touch the holes, Jesus talked him out of it. So he never did get to actually touch, touch the holes. You never got to touch the, the holes. holes where the nails were. Yeah. We probably need to take a break. It's getting toward the end of the hour or the middle of the hour, excuse me. Uh, this is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Doubter Five and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's take just a moment to talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 22nd year and have over 1,100 members. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. Look for us inside at the high top tables or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. You can also find us online at Facebook, meetup.com or at knoxvilleatheist.org. You can just Google Knoxville Atheist for that matter. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start oh, one. one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? Uh, so we had a really cool conversation on common sense. Um, not always a good thing. We have better standards out there, but it is a ubiquitous thing. Right. So it could be useful for some cases. My thing is leverage it for what it is. It is a low standard of evidence, which should only be used for like low standard claims uh, in terms of how extraordinary they are. If you drop a screwdriver, common sense says maybe you can pick it up. Right. And, and keep working. That's simple. But if you're working on a rocket ship, do your math again. <laughs> use a higher <laughs> yeah. mathematics. Yeah. Don't use don't use your basic stuff I on that. Measure yeah, twice, cut, 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 cut once. <laughs> exactly, which is not common sense. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so I, I was thinking about this because, you know, like you were talking about your your lab and the level, you know, the level of precision, uh, for one thing, that, that you need to go to and the scales at which you work. And common sense, I think, works really on the human scale, right? Yes. So it's... You know, it's 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 sort of um, it's the the scales that our senses can perceive un you know without technology. You know, like um, you know this the scale of size, for instance. I mean, when you when you try to uh, wrap your head around you know uh, you know astronomical distances or microscopic uh, sizes mm. uh, that is beyond the realm of common sense. And, and that's where a lot of people who are not, um, you know, uh, not don't have any kind of uh, scientific background kind of get lost mm. and common sense no longer has a, a good grip there because they, they just can't scale up or scale down uh, from that, that sort of anthropocentric um, scale. Right. Dread, you're kind of getting a little spiritual here. I kind of love it because everything <laughs> that I experience as a human being. I get touched within... by the noodly one every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> everything I experience as a human being is within my realm <laughs> of understanding, right? Yeah. And yeah. because of that, I apply significance to it because it's what's directly impacting me. Of course. However, yeah. there are so many things beyond my level of understanding that yeah. are real, have a significant impact on me, and do so on, a, on a, every second of my life. But because I yeah. can't understand it, I easily dismiss it. 
And so some of the, the, the adventures, the journey with science is learning to apply, to apply significance on things that I can't commonsensically grasp or right. observe immediately and appreciate right. them as real forces mm -hmm. that exist in this universe. And that is such, it, it starts as like, wow, there's these cool things out here that I'll never see. No one's ever going to see a black hole in their life. No one's ever going to see like one photon. But we can come up with these models to explain how these things exist and why they exist and use things that help us on a daily basis, glasses, uh, x-ray machines, car, car ABS systems, things that yeah. you will never see but do exist and have an impact in your life on a regular basis. With telescopes, especially radio telescopes, will show radio us things we can, never, we can never see. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I just find it to be an experience of humility to recognize that I am woefully prepared, ill-prepared to understand how the forces of the universe exist and the myriad of them that exist in the universe. I can't, I can't appreciate them all, but science gives me a door to open up to appreciate that. However, yeah. when I do that, I have to recognize that, man, I have like the starter pack of <laughs> understanding how this universe works. I only have like this squishy little body that's not even permanent. Like this is, I'm going to, I have to recognize that I'm not going to learn everything, but I can open up a door to appreciating way more than I'm open up to. If I'm willing to do that, if my ego lets me do that, Larry, what's up? Yeah. Um, no, I'm sure that there are religious people out there right now saying, well, I have faith. Faith shows me things that you can't see with a telescope. Uh, well, faith is very subjective, extremely subjective. Matter of fact, every different religion in the world uses faith to believe the things that they want to believe or that their pre preachers or their holy book tells them is real. You use faith basically to stop asking questions, which yes. is the basis of science. Yes. Ask those questions. Yes. Get some answers. Make sure that you can verify those answers when you do get them. Yes. The death of understanding is when you stop asking questions. And mm -hmm. I feel like faith is yeah. nothing but ammunition to make you stop asking questions. That's, That's right. It's an anthema to understanding. Yes. I love doubting Thomas. <clears throat> I just, I feel like that's the most obvious thing that anyone with a common sense understand. Can we just go back to common sense real quick? Mm -hmm. If you had, if you just said, hey, my Messiah was dead last Friday. It's only been a day and a half. <laughs> He's alive, <laughs> alive and walking now. But everyone's Don't say it's three, three days. days. Don't say, everyone's like, it's three days. Like, wasn't he dead Friday? Like, that was like, I mean, he. I agree. We all alive. agree he was dead Saturday. But like he died like in the evening and it's barely morning and it's he's and he's back again. Like, are we, are we really going to give him? All right, fine. Three days. Fine. I'm not going to be that doubting Thomas, but I do want to touch those holes. <laughs> I really <laughs> like that guy. I just want to yeah, make sure the same guy. Skepticism. Guys. That's right. Yeah. Look, can we can he show us the holes? I Like, well, he saw the holes go in. Can we look at them? No. Thomas. Yeah. And what's like, funny, none of the uh, none of the acolytes, none of his. Uh, what do you call them? Apostles. Awesome. Yeah. Recognized him when he came back. Right. In all of the different books, it always says that nobody recognized him. So it could have been a different person playing him and yeah. just going off on that to use their religious beliefs against them. Their superstition. And I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say this in a bad way, but this was before trains existed, before airplanes existed. This wasn't like America where there's people that look like Larry and people who look like me and people who look like, you know, Asian people and, and Indian people. And we're all hanging out with each other. And if like an Indian guy walks out the room and uh, an, uh, a Chinese person comes in after him, you'd be like, Hey, that's a different person. Like we can, like we can immediately <laughs> common sense with the <clears throat> However, if you're in a place where, you know, is early Mesopotamia, like this is like, this is the cradle of, hum of human society still not a lot of people like travel. Not a lot of people go to different places. Yeah. Most people look the same. Most people can recognize each other. Like most people are related to each other, you know? And you're telling me a, a guy who's very famous, who's dead, came back and no one's like, I don't recognize this guy. That should be like red mm -hmm. flags for everybody in the room. It's like, you, you yeah. don't know this person? Mm -hmm. No, it's Prince. It's like, are you sure? I don't know. <laughs> it's the same guy. I, I, I feel have, have, have you ever seen this uh, this experiment where um, you know, two people are having a conversation, and like two strangers on the street, and uh, this is a, it's a setup, right? So, okay. um, some some stranger approaches a person and asks them, uh, you know, questions like directions or whatever, 
And then in between, like just coming in between them, somebody, you know, two people with a, with a, you know, a sheet of plywood or something. Sure. And enter, you know, cuts in between them and the person switches out. Right. Okay. And when the, and when the plywood passes, it's a completely different person, but having the same conversation. And oftentimes the person doesn't recognize that the person has changed. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. You're right. It's, it's, like it's, the gorilla. Sort of it's like the gorilla walking through the, through the basketball thing. You know, you, they say count how many times the basketball bounces and how no one, and people are, are so paying attention to the, the balls that they don't see the gorilla dancing across. Dread, I have thing. to ask, how egregious does the change get? Is it is it just a change of shirt color, or is it like a like a woman it, to a man? Like how how uh, how they, bad does it they, get? They've done they've done it pretty extreme. Woman to a man, even they've done this with dating. You know, where <laughs> someone you know they're they're oh, no. you know, so like a woman could be dating a guy. A, and then they switch it out with the lady, yeah. and the lady's and they, like, ah, they, it's fine with they, me. I'm good. <laughs> they're, they're, sit, they're sitting at a table, having a conversation, and yeah. uh, the, the person gets up and says, oh, I just have to go to the bathroom. And the person that comes back is completely different. Like, it, it, it's, it, you know, it's it's actually startling. How, I'd like to look this up. What's the name of that experiment? Um, well, How would I find a, it? Candid camera. Uh, there's, there's a, there was a show called "What Would You Do," okay. and it has a lot of those things in it. Um, mm. But I'll, I'll, I'll have to, I'll look into it if you can't find it from there. Um, okay. But there's, a, yeah, there's a couple of very, very interesting, and they videotaped all this stuff. So it's very cool. Yeah, right, cool. It's, it, it's it really telling. tells you how flawed human beings are per perceptually. Yes. And how common sense really um can you know be our worst enemy in some cases there's a um if you're look if we're recommending youtube videos that's one one a great thing because i think that's a great demonstration of how unreliable our sense of observation is yeah because yeah. it's not a one-to-one -one, it's not like you're it's like photons directly going to your brain there's a lot of interpretation going on there and yeah, your brain yeah. choosing what to see and yeah. choosing what to make note of and, and, then, and that's and that's an important thing in memory as well, right? Because yes. your memory doesn't work like a table right. book. You're, Correct. You're constructing reality as you go. Yes. By the you know what senses you're uh, focusing on, and you know where where your head's at. You know how right. tired you are. You mm -hmm. know um, whether you're hungry or hangry. You know, like yeah. all these things influence <laughs> your perception, right? And you're constantly you know? making rationales out of the things that yeah. you're seeing too, like. If if for whatever reason I looked at Larry and he had a, a red plaid shirt on instead of a blue one, my mm -hmm. brain would just be like, oh, no, he always had a red one on. Even if he swapped it out, he did that trick on us. My brain would just be like, right. oh, that's just the way it is, because how unlikely would it be that he changed the color of his shirt mid-show, right. right? My right. brain is just So you constantly... correct your own memory instantaneously. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. And you could have filters on that just change your shirt to blue, and I would just have to, like, rationalize, no, that's the way it always was. Like, my brain is constantly making judgment calls for me. Whether I like it or not, and I can't turn it off, and that's how we both observe, but how we recall information, uh, which could be to a lot of detriments. I mean, there are a lot of innocent people in prison right now due to how misinformed people are with how perception works, right? Yeah, right. for sure. Um, I wanted to highlight with the Danny Thomas story too. Along with that is, it's knowing that about human society. It's not even just a, a the Danny Thomas story isn't even just an expression of. Humans can doubt how perception works and people can lie, which is a bad combination. So you should endorse people asking questions because wouldn't it make good common sense to ask questions if you have questions? And if it's something's true, what's the impact of answering that question aside from upholding the truth? And if it's a lie, at least by asking questions, you can get rid of lies. So like, if anything, the moral of the story should have been touting Thomas asked a question, Jesus was like, no, Totally, dude. Come over here. I'm so glad you asked questions. Let me absolutely prove I am who I am because there are different people right. who, are, who are doubting me. It's the other people who are doubting me that are a problem. It's you who ask the questions with the doubt, constructively doing tests. That I support. Awesome. Call this science. Yeah. You guys are great. <laughs> See you later. Yeah. Going back to heaven. Yeah. <laughs> but no, the story is like, I'm going to chastise you for not believing me without evidence forefront. Yeah. And I feel like that's such... Right. 
a such the backbone of of religion right believe without question believe without question it's such a telling underhanded story of someone if i'm lying that's the moral that i would love for you to have don't ever question me i'm so good that you can't even doubt me reasonably even with your with your body that it's naturally ingrained to doubt things and uh, it's such a it's such a um a telling wrinkle in the story in my opinion i you know you don't ever have to go to um the story of jesus you can just go to the story of the emperor's new clothes which i love just as much as a yeah. as a parable cuz these are people who are willing to rationalize their behavior and what they claim to see just so that they can fit into a crowd or be seen as part of like the herd or or not be chastised for being different where it's the kid that finally says hey that's the emperor's naked and everyone's like oh finally someone said it we all thought the same thing but we didn't know if we were allowed to say it or not like yeah. that should be the demonstration of you know you're you can make good observations and you shouldn't let societal yeah. pressure maybe you should keep a kid they, they in actually your lap. Call, they actually <laughs> yeah. hey ty these are nanometer scale i'm like listen to this kid yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, they call that the spiral of silence when um you know, most people uh, know something other than what they think the common understanding is. Yeah. Um, you guys are familiar with Hebrews 11? No. Um, no not offhand. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. Right, this is right, what right. the ancients, this is what the ancients were commended for. That's the opening of Hebrews 11. So that says it all, right? Like wow. uh, we don't test, we don't test faith, we don't check the facts, uh, we <laughs> just believe it, and, and that's <laughs> we run on hope. We run <laughs> on hope. Scary, scary yeah. situation. Well, it <laughs> says what faith is the evidence of things not seen. Mm. Yeah, well, that's, the, that's, uh, that's, first that's, faith is evidence. It's I mean that right there is is law. Yeah. It's a lie. A lie. Sorry, it's mm-hmm. wrong. Faith is not evidence. So I'm going to throw something out. Really, this is a bit of a random thing, but I do find like there's a disconnect between how we buy our appliances, our products, our cars, versus how we elect officials. Like when we want to buy a car, we uh, I was looking for safety ratings. I was looking for reviews online. How many doors? What's the clearance? Like how will this look like on the road? Will it be visible enough? Do I have the features that I expect to have for safety for a car that's like relatively new? Like I'm doing a lot of research and I'm making sure it's either there or it's not there. Like I'm doing evidence. I'm doing evidence-backed research. I'm looking at YouTube videos. I'm like, I don't like it from this angle. Let me try something else. And I threw, I had a whole spreadsheet. I was doing research and I was like, nope, 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 nope. Until I got the car that I finally got. But when it comes to elected officials, even I fall prone to uh, um, emotional arguments. So like I might know who I want to elect as like, my governor and my president when i'm in the booth and it's like you have seven representatives that you need to elect and you're like oh man i didn't i didn't pay attention to any of this can i pull out my phone and just yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. which one's the the color that i like or which one hasn't said anything crazy in the last four <laughs> years when i searched them up on google it's like oh you said something nutty i'm not going to do you i might actually switch the other color just to get you out but like my research is so on the fly on the majority of the ballot uh, it's not in terms of like impact, but definitely in terms of like local impact for sure, right? And so I wish people were as motivated to look into people as they would appliances when it comes to cars. Right. Do you think that yeah. that's apply the sense? apply the same level of scrutiny, right? Yes, yes, yes. Apply that same level, which is why. Right. Now I'm starting again with my crazy town because I'd love to to explore this idea with you. Some people are reluctant to hire AI as their political officials. Whereas for me, I can't wait until we get to that day. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. I don't think these jobs should be jobs that people should have. I think they should just be algorithms that are uh, right. at least code verified, like on GitHub. You'd be like, this is how we're doing the code. And you can compare these two codes and you can run simulations against them. They're free open codes for you to run. But whenever there's a political question, we will run them through the 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 elected AI. And you can run your simulations and it'll be exactly that. I'd love that way more than a person. What's up, Larry? Well, we've been off the air. Uh, we haven't done a show last week, but in the two weeks in between, there's the European Union has had a meeting on AI. 
And the crux of their meeting was, how are we going to get our values into this new super intelligence that is being invented? And they're worried about it because mainly the, the intelligence are being uh, in, invented in America mm. and maybe in China. Mm. Um, you know, the, the forefront uh, is America and they, they're worried that we are going to put all of our values into this AI and they will not get a word. Uh, a way to put their values in. They want secularism. They want uh, uh, more or less a type of socialism. They want, and of course, the Chinese want communism, and Americans want more and more of America. Uh, population wise, want religion in it. I'm sure they want to be able to have their God represented by this AI. So now we're at the point where we see it coming. But hmm. what kind of values are we going to be instilling in this? super intelligence that's coming and and it's actually a bigger problem than that i mean they call it the alignment problem right where um you know when it gets to the point that um you know ai is you know legitimately self-aware is its values that develop independent of whatever our inputs are are they going to align with our interests as a as a species, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's that's the bigger question. I mean, you can program, you can program, you know, sort of, I guess, a sensibility. Yeah. But you know, do they would computers truly have values as we program them, or values that they develop independent of? of our contributions to what they ought to be thinking. Yeah. There's a there saying. Is, is, you can't make an ought. You can't get an ought from an is, like uh, David Hume said, right? Well, I, I get uh, benefit and hope from the old saying, uh, truth has a liberal bent. If you if you've heard that <laughs> if you've heard that saying before, uh, and uh, hopefully good. this is super intelligent will find truth yes. and be able to uh, realize that uh, being woke is the best possible <laughs> um, path forward for humanity. Sure. So yeah. we'll we'll see. I guess. No, I like that. I I I do find like we're in the middle of a very interesting point. We're we're definitely on the. We're not at the event horizon, but we're at the point where AI is just really annoying based on the different kinds that there are out there. So I know like when I'm driving, I can be like, hey, smartphone, tell me where the nearest uh, Mexican store for me to get Mexican food at is. And it'll be like, I don't understand what you're talking about because I'm not saying take me to Taco Bell. Like I'm not so clear with my terms that it's like, I know I'm not even understanding what you're saying. I'm just looking for the keywords and punching. You're asking keywords. for opinions. Right. But I know with my AI, like ChatGPT, I can be like, can you tell me like really what's the most beneficial, like delicious food that I can get that was like circa 1990s for like Mexican food that had like some tagine, like kind of, I don't even know how to pronounce it, but can you explain to me like these different kinds of candies and compare them with Bolivia from the, the 1800s? It's like, yeah, here's a full on report. Can you also take me to Taco Bell? I don't know where Taco Bell is. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> chat based AI. And so yeah. I'm like stuck in between these why don't you know what this other thing knows? And why aren't you as helpful as this other thing? Like, why can't we just combine these two? Cause I'm like, it's almost as if I had two kids and I'm like, I have my smart kid in the background who knows everything, but <laughs> doesn't know how to talk to people. And then I have my kid who like is super friendly. It's willing to talk to you, but doesn't know anything. <laughs> it's like, uh, this is hard. <clears throat> we need to merge these brains together. That's where yeah. we're at right now with AI. We're not like at the, the true ask me anything. I'll do anything. It's just that the, which version do you want to talk to? Uh, yeah. that's Stephen that's Stephen Colbert, uh, uh, Larry. Um, it's a well known fact that reality has a liberal bias. Uh huh. There you go. Stephen, I Stephen wonder where Colbert. it came from. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> but I do think AI could be very helpful for us as a tool. I don't think it's going away. And I think it's telling that we are interested in making sure that the messaging from it doesn't set us back further by setting us up for success to the point where when we have AI controlling a lot of things that we do from an administrative point of view, we can have a model that doesn't inhibit us from progressing further or as fast as we want to. And right. I think we can definitely get there. I think we can definitely even use AI even as a tool to get there. And 
I'm looking forward to that day because I say there are some jobs that shouldn't be jobs. And I go and that goes from people who are in factory lines moving one thing from one conveyor belt to the other to people right. rubber stamping things as like, yes, I approve of this. Yes, I approve of that. It's like mm -hmm. get rid of that person. Let them be let them be an engineer and yeah, do yeah. some real work. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. No, uh, I I've used uh, Chat GPT in my work. Um like I'm reviewing corporations and reviewing companies, you know, for the patterns of spending and stuff like that. And I see this company that I'm not really, they do a kind of work that I'm not really familiar with. And I see the spending pattern and I couldn't figure it out. I said, why would they do that? And I, I just out of curiosity, I brought up chat GPT and, and explained the situation. They gave me five good reasons why this particular spending pattern would, would apply to that type wow, of company. It was cool. awesome. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. I was telling yeah, you, I, can you know, see I, myself I, doing I pay that. a monthly fee for uh, Chat GPT four. Oh, um, good for you! It's, just, it's like I don't know, fifteen dollars a month or something like that. But mm -hmm. um, it's it is really a cut above the the other one. Yeah. Yeah. In our lab, we have a a machine that makes acid water as its waste stream, and we collect it in a jug, and we can basically tell Chat GPT, listen, we have this much volume. It's currently at this pH. How much yeah. sodium bicarbonate do we need to add to this so it'll neutralize oh, nice. itself back to neutral and yeah. only and be safe enough to pour down the sink, right? And it right. will it will show you not it won't even tell you the answer. It'll do the whole breakdown of the math for you. And Sweet. it'll be like blah, 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 blah. Here are all the moles. Here you go. And you're like, fantastic. Okay, so it's only gonna be 612 grams. And you pour it in, you pour in the grams, and every single new gram of base that you add to the acid causes this the system to fizz. Right because it's making gases. Yeah. And then once you add in like the little bit more, it stops fizzing. And that's when you know you have a neutral solution and you can stop yeah, yeah. And you're like, wow, ChatGPT, you're doing science for us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah. We're getting to the top of the hour. We probably need to start um, ending the show here. Okay. Um, we support AI. We support reality. Common sense, do. you're on the ropes, but listen, there's better stuff out there. That's the main thing that I wanted to say. Yeah, also, yeah. I can't believe everybody. We had all these conversations on Easter. How how terrible we ha we talked about AI and <laughs> yeah. How and did, did Jesus really die? I mean, there's no such thing as oh death, no, he's right? going straight for the neck. Okay, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not think about common sense. You know, if 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 death has been defeated, you know, then what kind of sacrifice would Jesus of death be? You know, he had a bad weekend for your sins. It wasn't even the full weekend. It was just Saturday. It's like, bro, yeah, just, we can yeah. still hang out. It's still the weekend. Like he, he's it's Easter now. Let's go play some disc golf. Like this is over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much for watching the show. You can catch me on Let's Chat on YouTube. Dread Pirate, where can we find you? Uh, I'm on YouTube as well under Mind Pirate. M I N D P Y R A T E. I've been doing weekly uh weekly short clips on various topics of pastafarian significance nice so come check it out uh you like and subscribe nice cool yeah and if you're a member of clergy but have come to see that the claims of religion are not justified and you're losing your faith as it were uh there is help for you uh it can there's group called the clergy project you can find them online at clergyproject.org that is actually retraining clergy to be able to do uh, work in the secular society. So if that's up your alley, give them a look. Uh, by the way, you can find this show on podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. My content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Uh, you can find my book, Atheism, What's It All About, on Amazon. And remember, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. We'll see you next Wednesday night at 7 o'clock here on WOZO Radio. Say bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.